Welcome to this first section, Learning Basics in Julia. This will be a tour of the language, giving you an overview of the whole language without getting too deep into the details. We'll look at the most common data types, such as numbers, strings, arrays, and dictionaries. In addition, I'll show you how to use functions in Julia and deal with common control flow structures, such as if, while, and for loops. In this video, we are going to look at numbers different ways in which you can create or express a number in Julia. And we'll also look at some common gotchas, like how to deal with division and remainders for integer numbers. Finally, we'll cover some common number operations. Numbers in Julia are quite similar to mainstream programming language. We can write integer numbers, positive or negative, floating point numbers, and we can even use scientific notation. So say here I'm writing 300,000. Now you might not know, well, what's the exact type of these? Uh, I can write type off and I can check what these are. So if I do type of three, use an in six to four. And for the floating point numbers as standard are float six to four. So if you want specific numbers, you would have to be explicit. So if I want an 8-bit number, do like that. And Julia kind of works like a calculator. So the last result that you get is stored in the variable a and s. So I can get that back. And I can do a type off a and s. And you can see that's an 8-bit integer. We can write these numbers in different formats. So I'm just written it in I'm now writing it in hexadecimal. If you want to see the decimal representation, the this deck or des, whatever you might call it, function, will get a string representation showing what the decimal version would be. We also have a similar one for binary. So that's probably not such an interesting example. Uh, let's just do what's the binary for seven. And we can also write in binary person herself, prefixing with a zero and then V. So that's six. We even have built in constants like pi and E. And what I think is really cool in Julia is that you can use LaTeX syntax for writing, you know, special Greek symbols. So if I write a backslash and theta and hit the tab, then I will get the Greek symbol. I say I want to have the sum symbol or for all and so on. So we can write pi with a backslash and hit tab. And then we actually have, so we can use the, the Greek pi symbol directly in our code. Now, if I'm going to write type off pi, this is where Julia will start looking a bit different from what you're used to. Now, you probably would guess that this is not going to be an integer. In most program languages, in the mainstream, whether it's C Sharp or Java uh, or C, these are likely going to be a floating point. But in Julia, they're actually an irrational number. And this goes for also the uh, Euler's number. So an irrational number is a number that can't be expressed as a fraction. We can actually have fractions in Julia as well. Now we can check what this is. So this is obviously not a straightforward way of creating a, ration, uh, a fraction. So we're having two integers, but it actually, when you're doing a division, you do a, a floating point division. So we want to actually express a ration. We have to do two slashes. So now, you get a fraction as a result. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
and you don't even need to, you know, match. So how do we actually work with the fractions? Well, we have a function for the denominator and one for the denominator. So I can take the denominator of, of course, a and s now is, is the help thing. So that was probably a bit confusing. So let's just write that again and, and let's just store the result to not screw up again. So let's do the denominator of x and the denominator of x. So those are some of the ways of creating numbers directly. Now, if you are reading numbers from a file, most likely you're getting the numbers as strings. So let's just clear the screen. So then we need to somehow parse them. And that's pretty straightforward with the parse function. So see, it makes a best guess. If I change this to, um, say, I parse, so then it's like a floating point, and then it will, that's what it's gonna pick us type. If you want to be explicit, you know, Julie can't guess to say all these numbers in a file are 8-bit integers. We can write this first argument. So types in Julia are actually first-class objects, so we can just pass them as arguments like that. And then let's just check and make sure that it's an 8-bit integer. We can even specify the um, the base. So say we're reading a whole bunch of numbers expressed in binary, and probably not so likely. But say we're adding a base 2 for binary. And so that works. OK, let's see how you do calculations. Pretty straightforward how you add numbers. Uh, they don't need to be the same precision or type. If I add these together, uh, Julia will promote them. So you can do floating point and integers and mix those together. We can do the power of and we can do the arbitrary complex expression. And then of course we have the ANS that remembers it and we can use that also in, in expressions. We have standard mathematical functions like the sine, cosine, arc, sinus, uh, arc, cosine, and so on. One thing that I th thought was useful to know about when coming to um, Julia is that because integer division doesn't work like in C, you actually get a floating point division, you might wonder, well, how do I do an integer division? Well, then you use the div function. So we'll just look that up. You can see that it doesn't, well, they call it an Euclidean uh, division. So if we just write that out, and if we want to have the, um, We want to have the remainder, we can either use this one, or this is a function called rem. You can see that these are equivalent. If you look up here in the documentation, you see it's the same thing. And here you can see the definition. Often it's easy to sort of mix these up with, say, the, the modular, which is often gives similar results, but of course it's not defined the same way. And of course, you should know how to do rounding. You can do a typical integer truncation with floor, uh, or regular rounding with round. With round, you can actually specify 
how many digits you want in the decimal. So say I want to specify I just want two, or maybe I just want ten, whatever. So if you look at the documentation, you can see it's quite uh, a lot of variety here. You can even specify the rounding mode. Uh, you see here in the examples, run with pi, the last number here, you're specifying the base. Um, so there are a lot of things you can do with this one. I'm not going to cover all of that now. Let's look at Boolean expressions, how we can compare numbers. There should be no surprises here. Um, just like with C, they these uh, operations look quite similar. You can have arbitrary complex expressions uh, combined with the Boolean operators. We can use the the, the or or the the and. And these are lazy as they would be in, for instance, in, in C. One way you can actually verify that is, so this should be true, right? And if you take an and here, this is everything in Julia is an expression. This is also an expression. You can just write hello. And because with the and, if this value is the true, then we're going to evaluate this one. So if it doesn't evaluate the truth, so let's do it like that. Well, then we get something different. And false and true. These are, are not, you know, some integer or something. They're, you well, know, maybe internally, but they're treated as a different type. They're treated as a Boolean type. Although actually the super type of bool is actually an integer, interestingly. And we have some uh, various functions, of course, which can have Boolean results, like is even, is odd. Now we covered something about numbers in Julia. It's a pretty big topic in Julia since it's a numeric language. You can do a lot of cool things. You can create your own number types. And there's really a lot more to be said about numbers, but we're going to cover that later because it's a big topic. Okay, let's do a recap. I've showed you how you can create numbers using decimal, hexadecimal, binary, and scientific notation. We looked at going back and forth from different string representations. Then I showed you that Julie can deal with many types of numbers, including fractions and irrational numbers. And finally, we looked at some operations such as the div and rem for dealing with integer divisions.